In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to use photo pills to plan a Milky Way shoot. It's about Milky Way season here in the Northern Hemisphere, so I'm sure you guys are getting antsy to get out and shoot some Milky Way photos. Uh, whether you guys are brand new to shooting Milky Way, or um, maybe you've shot Milky Way before but don't quite understand how to plan out a shoot, this is a great video for you to start because I'm going to show you guys exactly how to use photo pills to figure out the moon phase, exactly where the Milky Way is in relation to your subject, um, and many more things that are really, really important to shooting in the nighttime to get great images of the Milky Way. So I'm going to be using my smartphone for this. Um, I've just got an iPhone, but an Android phone works as well. Photopills is on both. Um, at the time of me making this video, I believe that Photopills is $9.99, uh, both on the App Store, the Apple App Store, and the Google Play Store. Um, so definitely make sure to pick it up. I highly recommend it. You can follow along with this video. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started here on my phone. Um, as I talk through this, I'm going to put up the screen recording of my phone on the right side of the screen here so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing on my phone to kind of walk you guys through exactly how this works. Okay. So uh, once you're in the app here, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to find the exact spot that you want to shoot. So for me, for example, I'm going to show you guys an example of if you wanted to shoot at Mount Rainier, really commonly photographed Milky Way scene. Most people shoot at what's called the Sunrise Visitor Center. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can figure out when the best days would be to go there. So maybe if you want to plan a vacation there this year, you can use this video to kind of figure out exactly when to go shoot the Milky Way. So I know the Sunrise Visitor Center is over here. Um, it's in Washington. I'm just looking at a map of the United States right now. You can do it anywhere in the world here. Um, but I am going to go into Washington. And I have found Mount Rainier here. And then Sunrise is right here. So the first thing I want to do is click uh, this button here, which will allow me to move the waypoint. And I'm going to have to go find this again now. Um, but you're going to move your waypoint from wherever it was. Then I'm going to put it here. So like I said, most people shoot uh, right around sunrise. Let's just say, for example, one of my favorite spots is like up here on the hill around this area. So let's just say right there. So now I've got that set as the point where I'm shooting. And now we can see the mountain is right here. So the first thing that we want to check is when the moon phase is going to be good, as well as when the Milky Way is going to be over the mountain. Um, because as you can see, uh, this mountain here is to the southwest. And at the beginning of the season, the Milky Way actually doesn't appear in the southwest sky. Um, it's going to appear more in the southeast sky. So I am just going to slide this over. Uh, this bar on the bottom allows me to change the date and the time. Uh, whereas this bar on the top is going to allow me to change things such as um, the moon. You can see right here I'm looking at the moon phases. Um, generally I'm using this right here to see the moon and sun phases as well as sliding over here, the visibility GC, which is galactic core. This is going to tell me when I can see the core of the Milky Way. So you can see right now that on, uh, down here on the bottom, right, I've got three fifteen twenty one, So March 15th of 2021, you can see that the Milky Way is visible from four 30 to six 30. Uh, which is great, but I don't think it's going to be in the correct direction that I want. So if I move the time, you can see on the center bottom of the screen, it shows me the time. So I'm going to slide it to 435 or like 4, let's go 5 a.m. because that's between 435 and 635. Now the big circles here um, that you see right in the middle there, those big circles are the core of the Milky Way. That is where we want the Milky Way to. Um, to be. So you can see that it's not over the mountain right now in relation to where I'm standing. It's way off to the side. So that's not a good time to do that. So I would just keep sliding here until it is. But um, a little spoiler alert here, I can tell you that it's not going to be over the mountain until July or August. So one thing that we can actually do is to go to more and then go to date. Rather than just sliding the bar endlessly and having a very sore thumb, it's actually quite beneficial to use this date feature because I can click on date and then I can just go to uh, further along in the summer. Let's go to say July 16th and we'll test that out. I'm going to click done. Now you can see it's July 16th. So you can see the visibility is from 12:28 a.m. to 3:50 a.m. Um, and now let's just see where the Milky Way is. Okay, so now you can see it's a little bit closer. And now right about here, I would say it's pretty much directly over the mountain. Uh, the summit of the mountain is going to be about right here in the middle. 
So that's kind of the center of the mountain. And you can see that right here at 3.45 a.m., that Milky Way will be directly up and down coming out of the mountain. You guys may have seen photos like this before where the Milky Way is appearing to come straight out of the mountain rather than some Milky Way photos where the Milky Way appears to be a little bit crooked on the horizon. So this would be an example of one where the Milky Way goes directly straight up and down out of the mountain. And you can see that that is at about 3.45 a.m. Now, the one thing that I do want to test here is what is the moon phase? So if I swipe back over, you can see that I've got a half moon and the moon is going to rise at 3 p.m. and set at 1.30 a.m. Now, I usually like to give myself a half an hour buffer. So as long as this is after 2 a.m., I'd be fine shooting it on this particular Saturday at 3.45 because the moon would be completely down and gone out of sight. We don't want the moon because if the moon is present, the Milky Way is going to be a lot dimmer because of all the light pollution. But... Uh, let's say that I wanted, I couldn't get there until, um, let's say the next weekend. Now, again, you can see that it lines up well at about 3.30 a.m., but the moon is still going to be up. You can see at the top it says 5.40 a.m. So this wouldn't be a good night to shoot because the moon is still going to be up. And in fact, this light blue line that you see right in here is where the moon would be. So the moon's actually going to be pretty close to the Milky Way, making it so that you wouldn't be able to shoot the Milky Way very well. So I'm going to keep going forwards until the moon phase gets a little bit smaller. You can see as I continue to swipe through the days, the moon gets less and less. Now you can see that we're into August 5th. Uh, the lineup is quite good again right there at about 3 a.m. And you can see that the moon doesn't rise until 3.30 a.m. And I'm also not too concerned about it because this light blue line here is where the moon is going to rise. So it's not causing us a huge issue. Um, because it's going to be directly behind us. And you can also see it's just a tiny crescent moon. It's hardly going to provide any light at all. So that would probably work well at about 3 a.m. Now, depending on where you wanted this, maybe you saw a particular shot that you had in mind where you wanted the Milky Way to be to the left. You could just swipe this and figure out at exactly what time you want to be up there and shooting. Now, of course, the accuracy is pretty good, but it's really hard to tell on this map compared to in the field exactly what something's going to look like. So obviously you want to give yourself a little bit of buffer time, get there a couple hours early, stay a couple hours later, just be totally prepared for whatever conditions are out there for you. So this is looking good. Um, again, about August 5th would be good here. You can see the moon is low. You could continue to swipe um, and find it at different points in time. Now, maybe you said, well, I can't show up until September or late September or October. Um, so if you kept swiping, you could see that it would still be doable at about midnight um, in September. So this is September 9th. So you can really look at any date, anytime, anywhere, wherever you want um, on this app, which I find so incredibly helpful. Now, the other thing that is nice is it's going to tell you the sunset and sunrise time. So let's say you want to shoot sunrise and sunset as well. So you'd be able to tell from this app by the yellow and the orange line where the sun is setting and where it's rising and at what time. Um, now, on this particular day here, you can see that the sun is rising almost directly to the east and it's setting almost directly to the west. So those are also things that are going to help you uh, in photography is just knowing where the sun's going to rise. Maybe you want to capture uh, Mount Rainier with the sunrise right over the peak. You would want to find a spot that lines up the sun with the mountain. Um, you can also toggle through things by clicking on the moon in the top corner here. This will allow you to go to the next moon phase. Uh, the next half moon, the next new moon. So you can continue to cycle through the new moon phases that way. You can also go over to the visibility GC and click on the top left. This will allow you to hide that little circle that shows the Milky Way. So if you just wanted to see sunset and sunrise, um, as well as where the sun is throughout the day, you could do that here. Um, and you can toggle that on and off. So as you can see here, there's a lot. So as you can see here, there is a lot of great features that I'm really liking in this app. Um, I really highly recommend you guys pick this up. It's so helpful to be able to plan out your Milky Way shoots. I'm using this all the time to plan out exactly where I'm going to shoot the Milky Way, uh, exactly what time and the orientation and everything like that. It's so incredibly helpful. And I know tons of professional photographers using this app. I'm not sponsored at all by PhotoPills to make this video. In fact, I don't even get any commission if you guys pick up the app. I just really think it's a great app. You guys should definitely check it out. It's really it's $10. That's the cost of two Starbucks coffees. Highly recommend it. Check it out. Uh, help bring your Milky Way photography to the next level. 
And yeah, I really just highly recommend it. So if you guys do want some more help with your Milky Way photography, I did want to mention that I am running a couple Milky Way uh, workshops this year where I'm going to teach you exactly how to shoot the Milky Way, exactly how to process the photos um, and the whole nine yards. It's going to be a great time. We're going to be hanging out in the dark. We're going to be shooting beautiful photos of the night sky. You're going to meet other photographers that are in the same place as you and so much more. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to leave the link to my workshop page down in the bio below. So if you guys do want to sign up and learn everything that you need to know to shoot amazing photos of the Milky Way, be sure to sign up. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video, and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one.